Okay, so I'm just forewarning you here at the time of filming this video, it is spring, I have allergies, so if you hear me sneezing or you see my eyes puffing or you see my head about to explode, it's because the pollen is coming out of my ears. So The Falcon and the Winter Soldier is a show that I wasn't too excited for when it was coming out and after watching it, I wasn't too impressed by. A lot of that has to do with the fact that it's just not that interesting. It doesn't really push the boundaries of the MCU and it's very clearly trying to be like its predecessors, that being Captain America the Winter Soldier or Captain America Civil War, but it, it doesn't really push the boundaries, as I said, like in the Winter Soldier, you had Hydra rising up out of nowhere, um, Bucky, which who was a big part of it, and there was a very emotional core to that movie because of the relationship between Bucky and Steve, and the fact that by the end of the movie, S.H.I.E.L.D. is just gone and then in Civil War you have a very emotional core again with Bucky and Steve but now it's the fall of the Avengers so each of those Captain America films that the Russo brothers directed th there's a lot that's been explored the boundaries of the MCU are being pushed here there's really nothing being pushed there's no new ground being tread here it has a lot of really uh, well filmed action um, and the first one that comes to mind is actually the first seen in the first episode of season one where Sam is just flying through canyons going up against helicopters like it reminds me of that one scene in Civil War where he kind of kicks the helicopter it's like that one shot in Civil War but this whole show or sequence is that and that's a big positive that I can say about at least these earlier MCU shows on Disney Plus is that they actually were filmed and the CGI for it, everything was cinema level. It should definitely not go unnoticed how well these shows look. Also, because I mentioned Bucky earlier on, he is yet again one of the most interesting characters in this show, in the MCU. We get to see more of his past as the Winter Soldier versus how he is today, having to deal with that. And there's a great line in the first episode where he's talking about how he just kept he was getting woken up from one battle to another and even when he was good it was pretty much the same thing from civil war to infinity war and then endgame so he's never had a moment of rest and he doesn't know what to do with himself we also get to see his time in wakanda and how his brainwashing was fixed i i choked up i won't lie and in regards to sam and bucky they are by far the best part of this show because I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm, I'm actually a huge fan of Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan simply because, I mean, have you seen their interviews? They are so funny together in the real world that putting them in a show together like this just seemed like the best idea ever. Like, I wasn't too excited for the show you know, on its own. I was more excited of the fact that we we're actually going to get to see something in the MCU that just had Sebastian Stan and Anthony Mackie interacting. And one thing that this show did that I will never forget is the revelation that there was an African-American super soldier. This show actually delves into that, you know, side plot a lot and it is one of the more interesting parts of this show and it works really well because it creates a lot of tension between Sam and Bucky giving them a lot more to talk about and fight about and it's just great. Zemo is also back in this show and I love the fact that he's back. I don't know what else to say. I mean watching him dance was just that was that was prime Zemo content right there. And it was really fun getting to see him put on his mask that you know not everyone would know about but if you've grown up with uh shows like Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. That's a cartoon that I, I did watch quite a bit when I was younger and Zemo in that show was it was really good and getting to see a almost live action version of that was pretty good. I just like the fact that they took Zemo in a bit more of a comedic direction for this show. Now I want to talk about John Walker. Oh my god. I, you know what? I did say Bucky was the most interesting character in the show, but John Walker, yeah, he was he was pretty intense and I will say that at the beginning I didn't I didn't know anything. I don't know anything about the comics, Marvel comics. So, when they introduced him, I was like, "Oh, fake Captain America." But as the show progressed and we get to see him develop as a sort of anti-Captain America or an anti-hero. He, he, I was getting real Homelander vibes from this guy and this show, um, 
at times actually did feel a bit like the boys because you're having co- like there was a commercial that popped up that seemed very wishy-washy and a lot like the tone that the boys was going for and then you have John Walker who is very he, he's he's just a dick but by the end of the show you you actually like you're okay with him by the end of the show I was okay with him I kind of like him as far as all that goes that's all my positives where this show drags for me is where it focuses on the flag smashers as they're called a group of um, radical teenagers, basically, who want to take the world back to during the blip when there wasn't as many people around. I was so bored watching these guys, and even though I had so many good things to say about this show just then, I this is where this show really drags. I didn't care one bit about watching Sam Wilson, John Walker, or Bucky Barnes go up against these guys. Like They are great when they're dealing with their own stuff but unfortunately a lot of their stuff hinges on the fact that they have to go up against this other larger than life threat and i just didn't care and the main villain who's leading the flag smashes they try to get us invested in this character but it just doesn't work for me and like i said at the beginning nothing in this show pushes the boundaries of the mcu i keep repeating myself but it nothing did this feels like a kind of a pointless show like i'm glad that i got to see john walker introduced i'm glad i got to see a show that just focused on bucky and sam's you know friendship and the fact that it was it was fun seeing zemo i didn't see a real point to this show where they could have just had sam be captain america because that's what they're leading to in captain america 4 it seemed like he accepted the shield at the end of Endgame, why did we need to have a show that had him go back on it and then choose to be Captain... Like, why? <laughs> it seems like such a pointless show. I don't like this. Whenever Disney does it with Star Wars, Marvel, whatever, when it, er, whenever it, it feels like they're just milking us, I don't like it. Even though there are things in this show that I liked, you heard me talk about the things that I like, I do not like the fact that they, it felt like they were just milking us. But I guess that's my review for The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I, I don't know if I'm actually excited for Captain America 4 after this show. Like, I would have been excited for it had they not done this. Anyway, uh, I'll see you in my review for Black Widow. Oh my god. (laughs) Okay, so I'm just forewarning you here. (laughs) What? (sighs) Anyway, like, It is clearly trying to be... Oh, God. I don't want to copy what someone else said. So, right away, 